Next week, we'll head out to San Francisco for the big annual J.P. Morgan Healthcare Conference. I always like to cover this event closely because it's ultra important for the industry. And it, that's why we had J.P. Morgan's Lisa Gill with us last night. We're headed for an avalanche of major healthcare news. So before the conference starts, I got to set the stage because there's a huge untold story here. Biopharma companies have finally rediscovered the urge to merge. Bye, 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 bye. House of pleasure. Historically, M&A has been a staple of this industry. When big companies start, uh, drug companies, they lose patent protection on their most important drugs. They love to snap up smaller biotechs, which often need their help to commercialize their drugs in the first place. Big Pharma is buying innovation, while the little biotechs sell themselves for distribution and marketing infrastructure. Everybody wins. You win if you own them. But in recent years, the deals stopped coming, largely because of hardliners at the uh, Federal Trade Commission. Uh, Lena Khan's FTC seems eager to block any and all mergers. She seemed to think that they're all anti-competitive by their very nature, and she's been especially hard on health care mergers. Now, you can always try to beat the FTC in court, but that's time-consuming and expensive. Many drug companies figure it just wasn't worth the trouble. If they get the wrong judge, they're on the hook for uh, huge legal bills and also for breakup fee for the takeover target. But I think all of that's changing now. Why? Okay, earlier this fall, when the FTC tried to block Amgen from buying Horizon Therapeutics for no good reason. There is zero overlap, and the FTC ultimately failed. Reached a settlement to let the deal go through. That was just transformative. This was a $28 billion transaction. Second largest healthcare deal since Biden was sworn in roughly three years ago. Hey, by the way, the biggest deal was Pfizer's $43 billion takeout of CGEN, the old Seattle Genetics, first anti cancer portfolio. Lots of people thought that deal would get blocked when it was announced in March, but it closed last month. Again, no real overlap. And maybe just the anger toward corporate America is subsiding here. I think these two transactions have been bold by biopharma companies to give M&A a shot again. In the final weeks of last year, we got a blitz of takeover announcements, and I want to catch you up with them now that we're back from the holidays, and wow, are they bullish. We started noticing this trend when AbbVie announced two major transactions within a week of each other. On November 30th, they said they were paying $10 billion for Immunogen. These guys have been around forever. They have a recently approved ovarian cancer treatment and a broader oncology portfolio where they harness your immune system to more directly target cancer cells. Then on December 6th, we learned that uh, AbbVie is buying Cerebell Therapeutics for $9 billion. Now, now, this is a clinical stage biotech company, pipeline of small molecule therapies for, uh, for neurological conditions, starting with Parkinson's, very hard to beat. Though they're doing some earlier stage work on schizophrenia and epilepsy, another two hard diseases. I think these are smart moves for Abby, but unfortunately, we just got a reminder of why they're so desperate to snap up these younger biotechs. CBS Caremarks, we're going to speak to them next week. Pharmacy Benefits Manager Business announced earlier this week that it's expanding its adoption of biosimilars, the biotech equivalent of generic drugs, and that includes removing AbbVie's top drug, Umira, from some of its list of preferred drugs for reimbursement. Umira is the best drug selling drug company in history, but last year it came off patent, so its sales are collapsing. It's not just AbbVie. On December 4th, Roche, the Swiss pharmaceutical titan, announced a deal to buy Karma Therapeutics. That's a privately held clinical stage biotech for $2.7 billion, plus additional milestone payments worth up to $400 million. Even though Karma's lead drug candidates are only in phase two trials, that's very early. Roche is willing to pay up for these guys because why? Okay, they're working on their own GLP-1 weight loss drug, something everybody wants a piece of because that's probably going to be the largest franchise in history. Uh, the largest category in history. It's probably going to take out even the anti-cholesterols. AstraZeneca also did a pair of $1 billion deals. On December 12th, the company said it's paying $1.1 billion for uh, Icosavix. That's a vaccine maker that two weeks ago. Uh, and two weeks later, they bought this company called Graycell Biotechnology for $1.2 billion. Can you believe all this stuff? This is an early-stage Chinese company working on cell therape therapies for cancer and autoimmune conditions. First time a big multinational drug company is trying to buy a Chinese biotech. It works out it could open the door to many, many more takeouts. But the most active pharma company in the M&A front, and I am thrilled about this, is Bristol-Myers. The very day Amgen closed on its acquisition of, of Horizon Therapeutics, Bristol-Myers agreed to buy Marathi Therapeutics for nearly $5 billion up front and as much as $1 billion in potential milestone payments. This is a small, targeted oncology company. Their non-small cell lung and cancer drug got approved a little over a year ago. Unfortunately, a very big category. Good way for Bristol-Myers to wind out its excellent cancer-fighting franchise. Then, just before the end of the year, in a blockbuster, Bristol Myers announced two more significant deals. On December 22nd, the company announced that it's paying $14 billion to buy Corona Therapeutics. They've been on the show. They focus on psychiatric and neurological conditions. Yeah, they were on in August of 2022 after they released strong clinical trial results for their schizophrenia drug. It could be a wonder drug, okay? Wonder drug. 
And uh, I, we're going to look for approval of that this year. Then just four days and one holiday later, on December 26th, Bristol Myers said they're paying roughly $4 billion to buy Ray's Bio. That's a clinical stage biotech, in other words, very early, focused on radio pharmaceutical therapeutics for various types of cancer. Very broad area, very smart kind of uh, acquisition here, uh, especially rare types of cancer. This is another one that made a lot of sense to me. But man, in the span of a few months, Bristol Myers agreed to buy three different companies. Let's take these deals as a whole. Again, Bristol Myers needs to make acquisitions because their top three drugs are facing stiff patent cliffs. Revlimid from, multi, uh, from multiple myeloma already started facing generic competition last year. That's what they got from Celgene, remember? Uh, meanwhile, Eliquis, their blockbuster blood clot treatment, goes off patent in 2026, which is right around the corner. And Updiva, their big cancer drug, goes generic in 2028. Together, the, those three drugs account for more than 61% of Bristol Myers' sales through the first nine months of last year. No wonder Bristol Myers went on a takeover spree. What? It's just, it's just so much common sense, people. This company has to turn, uh, has to essentially turn over most of its portfolio within the next few years. I wouldn't be surprised if they're far from finished. We'll certainly take it up with them when we speak to them next week. Here's the bottom line. I know the drug companies are tough to own in presidential election years, but in recent months, we've witnessed a big form of takeover spree. And this wave of consolidation is something you need to keep in mind when the J.P. Morgan Healthcare Conference kicks off next week because, oh, man, I think it is still in its infancy. Man, money is back after the break. Coming up, fair to say that this stock is outperforming. So who gets the credit? Kramer scores the scorer when Mad Money returns. <laughs> 